All right. Hello. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, so this is my talk, WebAssembly for JavaScript developers. We're all JavaScript developers here, so let's get into it. So first, let's do some introductions. Who am I? Who, like an owl? Hi. Anyways, um, so my name is Aaron Durder. Uh, a lot of people give me the AA Ron joke. Uh, I don't mind it. It's pretty funny. And uh, on the internet, you might find me as Torch2424. Um, I'm there on GitHub, Twitter, Discord, whatever it may be. You can catch me after if you want to know why. So I'll be getting to these in more detail, but I do a handful of things. Uh, I'm a member of the AssemblyScript team, which is a TypeScript-like language to WebAssembly. Doesn't mean you can just take a React app and compile it to WebAssembly, but we'll explain that later. I'm the creator of Wasmboy, which uh, David mentioned. It's a Game Boy emulation library to WebAssembly. Um, I'm the creator of Wasm by Example, which is like bite-sized examples for getting stuff done, kind of like Go by Example if you're familiar. Um, made with WebAssembly, which is just a website saying like, hey, look, all these cool things that use WebAssembly, and like, here's how they did it. And I also work at Fastly on their WebAssembly efforts with Computed Edge, which is kind of like WebAssembly on the serverless edge type thing. So cool. Now we know who I am. What am I going to talk about? Um, so first, we're going to do a general introduction into WebAssembly. Then we're going to talk about how can we use WebAssembly in uh, our modern JavaScript applications efficiently. And then when we start doing WebAssembly, what kind of results can we expect to get out of it by moving our web applications to use more WebAssembly within them? So there are just some disclaimers, though. Um, I did a lot of my uh, architecture work and stuff here at 3 in the morning. I used to play Game Boy a lot at 3 in the morning. And now I'm just giving talks about Game Boy at 3 in the morning. Or <laughs> I'm giving, writing these talks at 3 in the morning. Um, it is not 3 in the morning. I'm on West Coast. I'm from LA. <laughs> yeah. But um, cool. And then this is not going to be a Game Boy talk. It's going to be a WebAssembly talk. So um, there are a lot of really good Game Boy resources out there. If you want to know like low level timing and things like that, I'd highly recommend the Ultimate Game Boy talk if you're interested. And uh, but yeah, so here we go. Um, so what is WebAssembly? Um, this is going to be a quick too long, didn't read of at least how I interpret what WebAssembly is and um, some of the reasons why you want to use WebAssembly in JavaScript. So WebAssembly is bytecode on the web. Browser engines like V8 um, that run in Chrome, what they do is they run WASM bytecode directly through the WebAssembly stack-based virtual machine. WebAssembly is the actual bytecode that gets executed within this virtual machine. And what bytecode offers is predictable performance. JavaScript, like relative to JavaScript, JavaScript needs to be parsed, evaluated, and then compiled many times through a just-in-time compiler. And uh, through this, these optimizations of recompiling over and over, this can get extremely fast or fall off this fast path and get kind of slow. Um, what bytecode offers is a more consistently predictable performance that won't fall off this fast path. So instead of your application going really fast and really slow, it's just going to go consistently really fast the whole time. Another thing that's nice about WebAssembly is it's extremely portable. So it's supported by all major browsers. So you can ship WebAssembly out to production today. Um, it runs in Node. So you can run the same image transformation algorithm on both the client and the server if you wanted to. Um, there's a lot of standalone runtimes, such as WASM time and Lucid. Um, this is great if you just want to run WebAssembly itself and don't want all the overhead of everything else that's in a browser. There's the WebAssembly system interface, which is a um, system interface for interacting with things like networking and file system. Well, networking is in proposal, but you get the point there. It's really great for these standalone runtimes. And uh, WebAssembly is really bundleable. So you can, for example, ship an NPM module that has both JavaScript and WebAssembly. That way you can have all the power of WebAssembly in your JavaScript on the modules that you pull down. So cool. WebAssembly should be compiled to another language. It is not a comp or it is a compiled target, and it shouldn't be written by hand. So if you go on Twitter, sometimes you'll see people that are like, oh, hey, look at my cool demo. I wrote this thing in the WebAssembly text format, which is kind of like a text format for WebAssembly. And uh, these are really cool demos and cool to see how it goes, but um, this isn't something you want to do day to day. You definitely want to write a high level language that compiles to WebAssembly. And uh, WebAssembly in its current state only supports integers and floats for its types, which at first is like really scary. But if you think about it, Everything in nature is numbers. So I'm kidding here. There's going to be a lot of tools that abstract this uh, detail away. and makes it really easy to use higher level types and things. But um, WebAssembly has the concept of linear memory, um, which there's a lot of really good technical explanations of this. Um, so take mine with a grain of salt. But uh, essentially, it's just one big array that you can throw stuff into from JavaScript and then read it from WebAssembly and vice versa. And WebAssembly is the evolution of ad ASM.js, which is a low-level subset of JavaScript. Um, it was and still is outputted by Inscription. And the benefit of it was just to get super hyper-optimized for the browser JavaScript. But now WebAssembly is doing the same thing, essentially, but uh, a lot faster and better. So cool. WebAssembly sounds really interesting. Um, do you have any examples of this WebAssembly thing? So um, yeah, what I have is a demo I built called Boy. 
Wasm Boy is a Game Boy and Game Boy Color emulation library. It's a written assembly script, which I mentioned earlier. Um, it's really emphasized on just, you know, kind of testing out the waters of assembly or web assembly and things. It has a debugger written in Preact and uses PhosphorJS for all the tiling that you see. Um, that way you can see the game in one and all the things happening in graphics on another. And uh, it's in installable on in NPM. So I mentioned the bundability earlier. That's a word, bundleability. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you could totally install it and use it in any of the application. And uh, there's another boy, which David mentioned, which is Vapor Boy. Uh, what it is, is a user-friendly PWA. It's powered by Wasm Boy by installing it from NPM and um, adds extra effects and fun features um, using the plugin API. It uses Preact CLI for the PWA stuff. That way I get stuff like service worker for free and uses uh, a Vaporwave CSS framework I wrote called Aesthetic CSS, which gives that nice Windows 95 looking desktop UI. So cool, uh, why build Wasm Boy? Why do all this work just to play with a uh, new language in the browser? Um, I really wanted to dig deep into WebAssembly and push its limits. Um, what emulators are is they're a really great way to stress test a new technology. Um, at the time, WebAssembly had just become stable in all browsers. This was about like two years, two and a half years ago. And um, emulators touch like almost all common application use cases. So you need to have support for graphics, sound, input, et cetera. And they can also be a bit demanding on your CPU and memory. Um, and at the time, there was no good emulator that I could find that would run Game Boy emulation on the web on mid-range mobile devices. So I kind of wanted to see, does WebAssembly kind of unlock that feature for us? And cool. So um, those apps sound really fun and sounds like something I would also want to do. How can I do that? So um, Serma has a really good article on this with a focus on their app Squoosh, which is an image optimizing application that uses WebAssembly. Um, what it kind of guides you through is the process of when and where replacing JavaScript with WebAssembly makes sense and um, how you can replace some of like that high performance, high computation JavaScript with WebAssembly instead to get better performance out of it. So there's a lot of great languages for writing WebAssembly. Um, the most mature tool chains are Rust, C with Inscription or C++ and AssemblyScript. But today I wanna to take a look at AssemblyScript. AssemblyScript is a TypeScript-like language that compiles to WebAssembly. It does this using Binarian, which is its own compiler and tool chain backend that it just sits on top of. Um, one thing to note is that this isn't a solution for just taking your TypeScript React app or Node.ts app and compiling to WebAssembly. AssemblyScript does have a few differences here and there. Like you may notice in what I'm showing, instead of having a number type, you have an integer 32 because WebAssembly has those basic integer types. But also um, there's no DOM access inside of uh, WebAssembly. So and in the current state, at least, not until some proposals like interface types come through. So to take something like a React app wouldn't really be possible quite yet. And uh, so, yeah. But it still, it reads and it really feels like you're writing TypeScript, which is really nice. Um, you can read the docs for more information and there's tons of good stuff you can learn from looking, just reading through the docs really quick. So I chose to use AssemblyScript for Wasmboy. And why did I do that? Um, I wanted to learn WebAssembly, um, but I didn't want to learn a new language at the same time. So I already wrote a ton of JavaScript and TypeScript before I started the project. And starting an emulator is kind of tedious. So finding the nuances of an unfamiliar language, like for example, I, don't, I didn't know Rust at the time. So trying to learn Rust, and learn the internals of the Game Boy and learn WebAssembly just seemed like too much. So I kind of wanted the easiest path to get started with WebAssembly without having to learn something else on top of it. And I think AssemblyScript provides a really good solution for JavaScript developers for getting into WebAssembly. So cool, we know what language you want to try with WebAssembly. So let's go ahead and build some stuff. So what I'll be doing here is showing some examples in WebAssembly Studio. Um, it's a little bit older, but it's a quick and easy way to play with AssemblyScript in the browser. So don't look too deep into the code. Um, you know, not really trying to show up, they're just trying to give you an idea of like how much code I have to write to do X, Y, or Z. Um, and at a high level, this is how the code is run. Or run. Assembly script, TypeScript file compiles down to WebAssembly. So you see on the left, it goes to the right. So you get the TypeScript file, compiles to the WebAssembly file. Um, that WebAssembly is then loaded into JavaScript and then it's instantiated and you can call exported functions on it. And that JavaScript's loaded into the browser, which then you can actually run the WebAssembly and things. So here's an example of exporting a function. Um, as you can see here, it's just simple, like you would in TypeScript, ES6, you would just export function. And then in JavaScript, what we do is we load that WebAssembly file, instantiate it, and then we can call it on the WebAssembly instance.exports, and then log out the result. So nothing too complicated here. And here we are accessing memory. Like again, don't look too deep into the code, just, just trying to show off this idea of passing memory. Um, Wasm memory is grown in pages. So each page represents, I think, about 64 kilobytes or kubibytes of memory. And you grow a, to a single page in our example. Um, and then I suggest you find your desired bytes by putting your, you know, your memory in division. So if you need like one megabyte, just divide by 64 kilobytes, whatever they be. But in this example, we store the number 24 to index zero in our WebAssembly memory or pointer to memory location zero, whatever sounds easier to you. 
Um, and then we're going to export a function to then return the memory location one or index one of the WAS memory. So it's getting a little complicated, but you no, know, it's just to display this memory passing idea. So then in our JavaScript side, we take our WebAssembly, we instantiate it, we you know write a uint eight array, like a byte array around our memory buffer. We write, um, we log out what's in um, location number zero, which is 24, which is great. That means WebAssembly can write to memory and then we can read it out of JavaScript. And then in JavaScript, we write 25 to memory location one, and then we can call it export. And then Waz is gonna tell us, hey, look, the number 25 is in there. So that's just a really, you, we're just trying to display here, hey, look, you can write back and forth between JavaScript and WebAssembly and pass numbers if you wanted to. So cool, you know, it seems a little low level, but tools make it easier. So um, AssemblyScript has a built-in runtime. So if you wanna do things like strings or objects or things of that sort, it has its own runtime that can manage your memory for you and handle some of facilitating some of the higher level types and it's removable. So if you don't need it and you like the low level stuff, you can totally just take it off and save two kilobytes on your WASM modules. Um, and then there's another tool called ASBind. It's another thing I wrote. Um, what it does is facilitates passing high level memory types between JavaScript and WebAssembly. So if you wanna just pass back a string to WebAssembly, you don't have to write it to memory. You can just say, hey, here's a string and then the library will go and write it to memory for you and things of that sort. So cool, here's a, another quick example of instantiating WASM just because I you know, kind of glossed over it, but it's nothing too difficult. I really suggest um, if you want to instantiate WASM, you might want to put it into your own like ESM module. That way you can handle both node and browser differences. They're very minute, but uh, that way you can support both having isomorphic, but a lot of libraries like ASBind or the assembly script loader will handle instantiation for you. So cool, we got stuff building and we actually have a really cool workflow going in which you know we're writing TypeScript, things look kind of nice. Um, how do we go about building slightly larger apps that have more than just a few functions and some constants? So this is kind of the architecture of WASMBoy. Um, it's broken into three parts. You have your WebAssembly core, which is like, you know, actually runs the main emulation of the Game Boy ROM. Then you have your lib on top of that, which does some convenience things like saving state or like passing input down into WebAssembly by using web APIs. And then there's this debugger or where Vaporboy sits. And it's kind of like your framework and user PWA reacting that you would you end up using. So looking at this architecture, we know a little bit more about it. Let's you know start looking through some workflows or how things are done. Let's say the library needs a password or you know, we want to load a ROM into the emulator. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to spawn uh, an octopus of web workers. And each worker has a job kind of re representing a peripheral in the Game Boy. And these workers are all isomorphic. So they all work in browser and node um, using you know, that same thing I was mentioning earlier. And this is definitely one of the three in the morning moments because um, an oct octopus of workers is kind of ridiculous. I also found out some browsers have a limit on the number of workers you can make. So um, yeah, sometimes they're just like, nah, you just can't make a fifth worker if you wanted to. Um, and plus too many workers, when you start getting too parallelized, it can actually slow things down. But in our case, actually having that many workers um, and the ones that do heavy lifting at least, having that many workers really helps. And that being said, why, why would you want to use web workers in the first place? I did this because of budget devices, which I mentioned earlier. This is a slide from Christopher Baxter's and Multi Ubel's JSCOM 2018 talk. And what it shows is that um, some of the popular um, phones, such as like the iPhone X, are just completely decimating these lower end um, devices that you see often in MBU markets like the Nokia 2. Um, and that means a lot of these budget devices are just completely greatly disadvantaged for single core performance. And what I want to do was kind of tap into their multi-core performance, because as you can see here, they tend to have a lot more multi-core performance over a single core. So as soon as you can start parallelizing and putting parts of your application into web workers, you can really start to tap into some of that hidden potential on these budget devices. So cool, after creating all these workers, we stitch them together using message channels. Um, so that way they can all talk to each other throughout the application lifecycle. And then cool, um, you know, one more thing. Then, oh yeah, duh. then the library will take the actual byte array of like the ROM file you uploaded and then pass that into the main worker and the config of WASM boy into the main core worker. And then the main worker is where the actual WASM instantiation happens. It'll then create the WASM module and then write the ROM into WASM memory where the core tells it to write the ROM. That way it's like, hey, look, you know, I want my ROM at index, let's say 1000. It'll then write the entire byte down there and then the core can then start playing with it using that WASM linear memory we talked about. So cool, now that we have our ROM loaded into our WASM memory, we can actually start playing in things. So the main lib, which is kind of on the main thread, it's gonna tell the first worker thread, hey, you know, start playing. What's gonna happen is that the main core worker is gonna run in like a set timeout, 60 frames per second loop. And the core, what it's gonna do while it's running is keep putting graphics and audio byte representation of what's happening inside the core into WASM memory. That way we can pull it out later as it's running. Then we're gonna go ahead and call, um, while we're executing, 
the lib is going to handle all the web API stuff for handling keyboard input and things. And that's going to get passed into the controller worker, which is then passed to the main core worker. This is another three in the morning moment. Why not just send the input directly to the main core worker? I don't know why I decided to do that. I just thought like, oh, it's cool. I have multiple workers for each peripheral. But in retrospect, you should just throw your input straight to the main worker. So after we execute every friend, we will start to go ahead and pass all the individual um, parts that are necessary to each peripheral down to their rep respective workers. So now as the core has been running and passing that binary representation of things like graphics and audio, we can then slice that out of WASM memory and then pass it to our other workers to do some more work on it. What these workers are really doing is that they're converting some of these binary or byte representations into what the web um, API is like. So for example, in audio, we have like a byte representation of audio of PCM samples, but the web API wants floats it, between a number between negative one and one. So we go ahead and pretty much do the math there, convert the entire whatever audio we got into float representation and then pass that back to the main thread, which can then pass that into the representative DOM API. So then start getting our graphics through Canvas and our audio through like the web audio API, I think it's called. So yeah. So awesome. We can build some really great apps that are high performant using assembly script and JavaScript. But if I'm a JavaScript developer today, is this really worth investing my time into? Um, you know, it, you know, even though it is really easy, it seems kind of easy to get started with, you know, this little bit of overhead of things you have to do and kind of funny stuff you have to play with. Um, and I'm here to say that depending on your application, if you're doing computationally intensive things, whether it be in the browser or node, so just like parsing huge uh, text data or running a Game Boy, for example, yes, it's definitely worth investing your time into, I think. Um, assembly script is in a really unique position because assembly script, like I said, it's TypeScript like. So it's essentially TypeScript WebAssembly. So we can also run our assembly script code through the TypeScript compiler and get ESM out of it uh, with some mocking, but you can totally get it going. Um, and assembly script provides some of these mocks for you. So you're like, I want to say three fourths of the way there with some of the mocks they provide. So I went ahead and wrote up a really detailed medium post about benchmarking Wasm Boy and kind of the results I got from it. And uh, from this benchmarking app I built in this article I wrote, I noticed a lot of Raspberry Pi people are using it to like test the Raspberry Pi browser, which is kind of fun. Um, but yeah, so here are some of the results. Um, uh, take a look at the benchmark. It has a lot more context of what's going on here. But in my use case of you know using a computationally intensive WASM emulator or Game Boy emulator, um, comparing to ES6 output from the TypeScript compiler, um, I noticed the speed is really dependent on the browser and device combo you have. But on average, on desktop, it was about 1.3x to 1.6x faster. And on mobile, it went from about 1.23x to 2.59x. So those are some pretty big speed gains you can get, especially when you start looking at mobile, when you start using replacing some of your hot path, you know, really highly computational JavaScript with WebAssembly. Um, so for me, at least, WASM made a lot of really good sense for my goal. It really allowed me to bring better performance to these mobile devices and bring new demanding apps to more devices on the mobile web, which is exactly what I wanted. So cool. In conclusion, WebAssembly is great for JS web applications. It makes more applications possible, like you know, bringing to mobile, and it also brings more portable code that we can go and share on NPM and use standalone on like their own runtimes and things. And uh, just for my own personal philosophies, I think it really helps bridge the gap of native. Um, in my experience, whenever I've chosen to write something for the web, I've always known like, oh, well, then I can't build this. Like, I couldn't build a video editor, for example, because it'd just be too slow. Um, WebAssembly really starts to unlock that, like, oh, hey, so I can have the portability of the web and the performance, too, of something like native, which is, like, really exciting to me. Um, and I think it's honestly a great complement to PWAs and trust of web activities and some of those, like, kind of bringing the web to your um, mobile home screen and things. Um, I definitely suggest checking out Assembly Script and Wasmboy. I think Assembly Scripts are a great way to get started with WebAssembly from JS background. And uh, if you do like Assembly Script, they are looking for sponsors, more backers and things. And we're looking for contributors, too. So if you're just like, oh, wow, this sounds really cool. I want to help out. Please let me know, reach out to any of us, any of the team, we'd be glad to help you out. So just some quick shout outs. Um, awesome GB Dev is a great awesome list for getting started with Game Boy. Um, R slash MU Dev is, I just like reading through R slash MU Dev because there's some people that built some really cool stuff. And you're like, wow, that's amazing. Um, a huge shout out to uh, Binge GB or Benji. They wrote an emulator called Binge GB. Um, they're currently the chair for WebAssembly community group. And like we actually met through Game Boy, but we both do WebAssembly now, which is kind of funny. And then some other um, Game Boy devs, Malix, DHJ World. Some of the script team is just awesome people. I'm so glad I get to work with all the time. Aspects, an amazing um, testing library for assembly script. Definitely check that out. And AS Wazzy, if you want to try out that Wazzy thing I was talking about, definitely take a look there. And just some of our reviewers, Kareem, Matthias, Sarma, Devin. Oh, I'll have to delete it, but you guys know. So yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much for organizers for having me. I know these are some tough times and I really appreciate y'all taking the time to move things virtual. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. And I hope everyone enjoyed the talk. Thank you.